Well, Daniel, uh, it's the end of the year. Yeah. Um, snuck up on me, but uh, here we are. And uh, with that, it is the end of the first season of the Sad Boys Book Club. Indeed. Uh, can't believe it's been this long already. I think our first upload was in February, but I think we actually started in January. So, uh, man, uh, quite a year, huh? I don't know. On the whole, I think I think we 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 accomplished uh, a lot of the goals that I that I wanted to this year. Like I, I remember when we were talking about during that that first one, where we were saying how we wanted to kind of get back into reading, because um, in both of our cases we had mostly stopped reading um, sometime uh, in college and or after high school, uh, you know. So, at least reading for pleasure, I'm sure, you know, we, you know, but it's, it's like, I don't know, it had been a while for me, so. Yeah. Did you read anything outside of what we covered here? Yeah, I read, I read a few books. Um, I read uh, The Jakarta Method. Um, I read um, The Anarchy. Um, by William Dalrymple. Uh, mostly, mostly what I read outside of this was nonfiction, you know, historical or, or other wise philosophical or technical things. Um, not that I, I, I didn't, I, I did listen to a few audiobooks as well I, this year. Um, basically, all of the, uh, the, the Witcher series by, yes, yeah, Sapkowski. Um, those were those were quite good. Um, I don't know. Th- that was pretty good. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I feel like there's there's some obvious big ones that I'm missing. Um, but all of the ones I mentioned were were ones that made a lot of impact, and I, I was I thought about a lot. Uh, I don't know. How about you? Uh, you know, I've read a few things. I've mentioned. Uh... I've mentioned them in passing here. Uh, let me pull up my list here. I have a nice reading list that I keep use to keep track of everything that I read every year. Um, yeah, outside of what we've covered, uh, I've read um, Elantris, which might be my favorite book uh, that I read this year that we didn't cover. Uh, mm-hmm. This is all fiction, but oh, I've only read fiction. Um, I read Light Lark, which might objectively be my least favorite book I've read this year, but uh, not the book I had the least amount of fun reading this year, mm-hmm. because I had so much fun reading it, despite the fact that it was, at best, an okay, readable book. Um, mm-hmm. I finally finished The Eye of the World. I started that two years ago, and that book was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I gotta um, say, there is something to be said about sticking with a book over two years. Even if you you read it in a relatively slow way, you were like, you still were sticking with it. You didn't put it down. Yeah, so that was great. Uh, and then I have I, I started two more books this year, but I haven't finished them yet. I'd like to finish one of them before the end of the year, but uh, as of this recording, there's a little over a week left in the year. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I highly doubt it. But uh, Xenos by Dan Abnett, the first book of the Eisenhorn trilogy for any Warhammer 40K fans out there. And Mistborn, the Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Um, real good a book, that Brando one is. A lot of Brando books. Yes, real good book, Mistborn, is so far. I, I, I finished part one, and it's fantastic. And um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say something that no Brandon Sanderson fan has ever said before. Uh, but man, I really love the magic system in Mistborn. It is real cool. I, actually, let me ask this question: What is a magic system? Um, it is a system of magic. Ah. Basically, the rules um, that govern a magic system, uh, the the kind of like physics behind it, the do's and don'ts, the can'ts and cans. That's that's what a magic system is. That, okay. in, in my words, at least. That's kind of. I guess those are, I guess, somewhat important. Yeah, and I I really like the one in in um, 
in Mistborn. I like it a lot more than the one in, in Elantris, which the one in Elantris was really cool. It had to do with, like, basically drawing glyphs in the air, and the glyph that you draw is the power that you're drawing from, and it draws from the power of the city itself. Uh, it's it's That one was really cool. But I, I, I like Mistborn. It's pretty similar to uh, The Witcher with the, the signs and all that. Yeah, there definitely is some similarities there for sure. But uh, the Mistborn one, just to make this really quick, um, it's called Allomancy, and it's based purely upon metals. And um, as I understand it this far in the book, there are 11 metals that you can use to um, do different use different types of magic. But there are only there are the eight most common ones and those are the ones that as far as i am in the book so far those are the ones that have been covered mm -hmm. uh and it's it's basically how it works is you consume the metal you normally through like like little little trace amounts of metal in a in a vial of water and you um as they call it in the book you burn the metal in your system in order to access the power associated with that metal and as you burn mm -hmm. the metal, it consumes it. And when you run out of that metal in your system, you run out of the ability to call upon that power. And it's really cool. And with the, the main eight, it's basically four sets. Um, and the best way to describe how, like, how they kind of work with each other is one of the sets is push and pull. So, you know, you burn one metal, you can push things away from you. You burn the other, the opposite metal, and you can pull things to you. You know, things like that. One of them augments your, your strength. One of them augments your, your senses. Uh, one of them allows you to see metal in the area. Uh, one of them allows you to um, read emotions. One of them uh, allows you to influence emotions. It's it's really cool. It's I really enjoy it. It has a, There was a lot of thought that Brandon went into with creating this, you can tell. And it just it allows for some really creative magical situations. So I really love Mistborn so far. I, I wanna wanna read it more. But yeah, I'd like to finish either Xenos or Mistborn before the year's out, but that will that will require some time on my part. Xenos would be a lot easier because it's only like three hundred pages, whereas Mistborn is I think close to six hundred, and also much more dense for those six hundred pages, whereas Xenos is a standard three hundred page book. Editing Dusty here. I finished Xenos. It was pretty good. But yeah, that, that's that's been my year, um, my best year in a long time. Um, you should uh, you should record yourself some Sad Boys book reviews, so that I can uh, I can put them up on the channel, on the YouTube channel. I, I I will finally get around to doing one for Elantris and Eye of the World eventually. I will do it because I I do want to put one up for those, get my thoughts out. Um, yeah. Because I did really like those books. They were both two of some of my favorite books I read this year. Crazy how I really um, cling to fantasy books and tend to like the very good ones. Crazy how that works, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we don't have a book to cover today. Uh, and, yeah, we're, we're just kind of looking back on our year. This is our... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's our Christmas and New Year's episode. So, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to uh, anybody out there. Uh, this will come out after Christmas, but before New Year's, so, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a good time to reflect and recap on the many books, uh, we've read. So, I was curious how you were wanting to do this, um, figured just, if you wanted to, to, uh, to rank the books, um, in order of your preference, or... I don't know. Maybe we could do like a, a tier list kind of thing. I know those are, those are those are quite popular and honestly pretty fun. Um, I don't know. How how would you like to talk about the books that we read this year? Um, I'm good with either or both. Honestly, that I didn't really think this through fully. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess w w I'm sure there is a nice. Um, artistic um, highly literate and very elegant way of presenting the books that we read this year but um, we are literally just two guys uh, we are the we who who, ba who basically have just barely gotten back into reading so 
Um, we're gonna we're gonna handle this in the way that our internet poisoned minds can handle. We are going to rank them. Uh, this this ranking, I there, I guess I guess Dusty, you can. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you were planning on ranking these? Um. So I just kind of made a a very quick. I, I'm not fancy enough to use the tier list thing that people use. Nor I don't have the time or patience to do it. I just made a nice little table on this Google Doc. It's just S A B C D, and a little spot for you and a spot for me, and then also just a little like you know uh, below that a uh, uh, one th- one to eight ranker just to rank our our books from favorite to least favorite, because you know we have to quantify everything here. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, internet brain poisoning. Um... But but uh, how how are you deci- how are you planning on deciding? Do you are you are you talking? Like, I guess what is the quantum of uh, enjoyment versus artistic merit that you're going on here? I'm just going purely on personal enjoyment. If we wanted to okay. go artistic merit, this would probably be a completely different ranking. Um, but I'm just going off of personal enjoyment, which I should start okay. by saying that I enjoyed every book we read. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll go with I'll go with um, personal enjoyment as well then, just so that it's a more apples to apples comparison. Um, oh. I did not enjoy every book we read, but I enjoyed the overwhelming majority. Yeah. I so I will um, I will so I I guess I guess we will go ahead and but that's not to say again. T- none of the books we have, we did this year are strictly speaking bad but not every but there there are like one and a half that I, I was not super fond of while reading and my thoughts really haven't changed too much yeah so with that uh you want to get started with house of leaves all right so the first book we read this year was house of leaves um by daniel levski um quite a good book in my estimation um i i one that in hindsight i guess i wish we we had saved for later because it's it was uh it, that's a heck of a book to come in cold to if you haven't been reading a lot in in some years oh so, absolutely uh that that one i i don't regret reading by any stretch but i wish i had been kind of i kind of worked up to it rather than tackling it cold um i really i really enjoyed it at the time i think there was a lot to to chew on there was a there was a lot i've i've seen some people online and and it's it's pretty controversial some people like the sort of avant-garde postmodern, like structural things that you do with the book like the turning like the footnotes and and all of that um i am very pro about that thing I, those things i think anything that is um i mean obviously the book is more than 20 years old at this point but I, not a lot of the things that have done that have been done in the book to my knowledge have uh really you haven't really seen much of um personally i i, I really I, I really like seeing artists uh really kind of push the limits of what what is uh you know considered feasible for an art form um it's i i think that's i don't know i it just gives me a lot of enjoyment seeing people try things and um i would say you know and there is an execution element to that somewhat uh well maybe not somewhat and there there is an execution element to that certainly but i would say uh it works out for the house of leaves uh far more than it doesn't work out um, so I quite enjoyed that. I am going to tentatively, I mean, I think once, once we go through, we'll try, we'll probably, uh, move some things around, but I am going to put that for me in the A rank, uh, for now. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of hard for me to say anything that you haven't already just said about that. Uh, I liked it a lot. I also hated it a lot. It was such a, such a weird kind of dichotomy of there would be a stretch where i'm like man i really love this and this is really great and then there would be another stretch where i'm like this is the worst book i've ever read what the hell um that is true 
I, I am thinking of how I felt at the end. But there were definitely portions where they're like talking about math equations and stuff. And I was like, this is awful. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's it's kind of a weird one for me. Um, but I did enjoy it as a whole. Uh, and this is also, if you uh, earlier you are talking about artistic uh, value over personal enjoyment for how we're doing this. This is kind of one of those examples to where it's like, if we were going off of artistic value, this would go straight into the S tier, no questions asked. Just a beautifully formatted book, uh, very well written from a, um, a technical standpoint. Uh, just, I loved all the weird and goofy nonsense it did, and the story it told was also pretty good in itself. Uh, but that being said, um, I, I do feel like I can't ignore those just brutally terrible chapters um which kind of hurts it for me so i think i guess for me i'm gonna put it i'm, I'm kind of i'm kind of torn between lower b and upper c but i think i'm gonna go with lower b for me mm -hmm. well you can we can always play with it i you you brought up some points that if i if i feel like i need to move it i might move it to b but i i, I i'm comfortable with a at the moment um but yeah we can we can we can play with it we can see see where things end up yeah overall really enjoyed it I, I thought it was a very good book yes very very good um the characters um will stay with me a long time yeah. navidson truant um zampano they're all i think i mentioned this in recently in one of our episodes where it's just like just very real um very well realized characters um often going through some very uh distressing situations but, but in a very, uh, to my mind, very realistic and very um, well-realized uh, way. Yeah. So next up we got Leviathan Wakes, James S.A. Corey. Leviathan Wakes. This one, this one I'm kind of 50-50 on. Um, there are parts of this book that are really, really cool, um, that are really, really interesting, um, I think the plot is good. Um, I, but I was not ever really invested in either of the two main uh, point of view characters. And in fact, uh, disliked them both uh, greatly. So it was, it was difficult. I had, a, I had, I was not as invested in this one as I probably should have been. Um, also, I, I think the 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 politics of the book are very of its time and uh so I, i'm gonna go ahead and uh but you know actually i mean let me before I, I i just dismiss it i think there's a lot of good stuff about this book um i think that they did it, it's one of the best um one of the best realized worlds that we we've, we've read like it very very vivid and very well described um uh world outs not even beyond the, our characters um i think the 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 plot is very interesting it moves along very well um i there is there's a a, a section in this book where there is um for all intents and purposes a zombie attack and um, that kind of thing, I, I guess I should say, in addition to the, the politics being a very of its time, the, uh, the, the, the peculiarities of the, of the plot, you know, like a zombie attack, that is very, um, very like aughts slash early 2010s kind of conceit. Um, so I wasn't in love with that. Having said that, it was very well executed. Um, even if it, even, it, and that maybe that's not fair to the book, but you know, that kind of stuff is kind of, uh, come and gone as far as, um, I, I, it's a little worn out, I should say. So for me, I will put this in the, uh, lower B, upper C. Um, I'll, 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 I'll have a bias towards high, so I'll put it in B for now and see how I feel as we continue to go along. Man, uh, so this was my favorite book of the year for for us. Um, I loved it. It was great. It did everything I like. 
in sci-fi. Uh, quite the polar opposite to you. Miller was my favorite character. I loved his story. I loved his, his character writing. Uh, thought it was great. I can't really say anything more that I haven't said before. It still hits just as hard for me. What, eight, nine months later? Uh, yep. This is a very easy S tier for me. All right. The next one is uh, The Stranger by Camus. Um, this is this is one I actually read uh, when I was in high school. Although, if you can believe it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't required of me. Um, I think I liked it more then um, than I did this time around. Possibly because at the time I was a more uh, consistent reader, so I may have had like uh, you know a, a better and richer palette at that time. Although I like to think. At this point, I've kind of recaptured that. But my feelings at the time were uh, of a of recognition that I, I, um, it was it was a, a piece of art and it had a lot of interesting things to say about about life and about um, the way we we function in the world and our relationship to others and how we we perceive people in the uh the out groups um i think potentially the character that they are that is captured in this book might might be what we might recognize now as a neurodivergent person although i i i'm not an expert in that by any means but i, I that is kind of one of the lenses that i i read this one through although um you know again i i don't really know uh again some of some of the the politics of this book are a little bit dated and of its time um camus was a uh was was a i forget what what the term is in french but essentially it was he was a uh, a french person that was born in algeria and as such he kind of he he writes from the perspective of a uh, mid-20th century european man speaking about an indigenous population um because that is that is the, the the conceit of the book is that a a European uh, Frenchman guy he he uh, murders a a uh, an, an Arab man and um, I the the one of the things that I I wish the book had gotten into a little bit more is the the sort of the humanization of the uh, the murder victim I don't think we even we don't even really get his name. Um, so those are kind of some of the kind of things that that stuck in my craw a little bit. Um, I think the like I said, I think the book does have some interesting things to say. It's it's well written, um, probably in French. It's well written, but our, our trans the translation was good. So I guess I can't like fully like one to one say. But it, it feels it, it it was a good read. It was it was pretty quick. Things moved uh, moved along pretty well. Um, Having said that, I am probably going to give this a C. Again, not a an artistic judgment. We're, we're going purely off of uh, enjoyment here. Yeah, um, I think you felt a little more strongly about it than I did. Um, it was... I, I did find it a little boring at times, despite it being a short read. Um, but I did like it. Um, I feel like that I... That is true. There's a lot of, of portions where he's like... I was sitting in my apartment. I was looking at my window. There were people passing by, and I thought they were like insects. Why would you even bother going outside? Yeah. Anyway, I stared at the window for an hour, and then at, at dusk I went to a restaurant. And at the restaurant, I, you know, that kind of stuff. It's it's not particular, even though it was brief. Uh, not not the most engaging to read. It definitely felt longer than it was. Um... But it, I, I, I like the, I like it from a, I, I like it for what it, what it meant more than what it said, if that makes sense. Like I, I like it more yeah. because of, uh, I guess the metatextual, uh, story that was told over over the actual story that was written down on paper. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's one of those things where once again, artistically, yeah, I'd probably put it like A or B. But I'm kind of with you, and I'm going to put it mid-C for me. I liked it. Didn't love it. Uh, it's, it's a story that has a better uh, message than a, be uh, a better message than a story, I feel. Yeah. 
that's that is a good point it, it, it's almost more of a uh, long form thought experiment rather than a than a novel yeah next up is the road by cormac mccarthy now this one um this one was very interesting i enjoy is almost the wrong term because there is a lot of um a lot of suffering a lot of darkness um a lot of like meanderings about the 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 great darkness that lives in the hearts of many um so there's parts of the book that are just like overwhelmingly like bleak um so um, so ranking in terms of enjoyment that 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 makes it tricky but i will cheat on this one to take enjoyment and expand it to a perhaps a broader definition of emotional resonance and um and that book succeeds in this in a in a remarkable way um in addition to being you know although non-conventional uh one of the most uh well-written books that we've read this year um i i think it, this is one that ranks both really would rank really high in terms of like the artistry of the book but also my enjoyment um the the interplay between the father and the son is is very good um i think you know i'm I, i'm sure for everyone but i i can only speak from my own perspective as a as as a as a son you know and there is a lot of there's a lot of um beauty and tenderness and emotional resonance that in, that I, I found in in this so i i really really enjoyed it um i'm going to go ahead and uh throw this in s tier wow i did not expect that i expected a um but okay uh i totally well, can see that well here's here's my thought here House of Leaves had some sections where I was I was like actively I did actively hate it. You you reminded me of some of that. Um, that's not the impression that I left House of Leaves with, but when you mentioned it, it was like okay when they were talking about like mathematical formulas and physics, and, and also just lists of names. I was like okay that that kind of sucks. Um, there was no such moment in the road. So I'm going to go ahead and and uh, tentatively put it at the top, very top in S. Yeah, the road is a weird one for me because I feel like artistically, I could just as easily put it in the S tier as I could put it in the D tier, and I know I would be a fool for putting it in the D tier, but like it's just kind of like at least at first for me it was McCarthy style of lack of punctuation and like just it if it was anyone else just awful formatting but for some reason the way that he did it made it really charming and that's why i would say you know you could put it in the d tier because it's just terrible formatting terrible grammar terrible punctuation but i don't know the, the way that he uses it is just so charming that it just you almost kind of have to put it in the s tier for that because it just works really well he breaks all of the rules making him the exception that proves the rule so yeah it's I, like do you do you remember like hearts on on um on those the pcs uh like like, like the windows 98 and all that and there's there's a strategy called shooting the moon and that's essentially like the, the idea is you, you play a hand and you try to get the lowest points possible but shooting the moon is the idea of just stacking on so many points that you like kind of like circle back around from like extremely losing to like first place so overflow that i yeah essentially yeah that was that was um i guess that's that's kind of how you might describe had the 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 style um displayed by mccarthy yeah but like as for the story itself you know i i i, I really enjoyed it it wasn't my favorite but i really had i don't remember if i really had a lot of bad things to say about the story itself i know i got a lot of um I got I got kind of meta in it at times, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know. But when I think about it, you know, like scenes like with the old man that I was at, like, I I posited the thing, the theory of is he did he actually exist, and you know the whole um, 
the backdrop of it and talking about you know what what kind of how we felt about the mother and the different situations that they put them in or the man that they helped give they, they by giving food it's you know a lot of a lot of good conversations to be had from the book from the story being told itself so mccarthy did a great job of kind of really stretching the morality as much as he could with the, with all the characters um so yeah it's it just it was a really good story that i really liked um but i i can't say that i really loved i just it, it's in the i like you very much kind of column that's it's so about as close to the i love to the i love you column without being in the i love you column um mm-hmm. so i want to put it high c for coca-cola <laughs> uh just kidding uh I, i'm putting it in the uh the upper echelons of the b tier for me it is as b is as high of a b as you could be without being an a uh loved it um if there was one more scene with coca-cola it would be bumped up to an a one of the things that i particularly enjoy about the book um was that although it was very dark and very bleak it did not surrender to nihilism and i think that that is that is a that is a trait in term in people and in uh writers uh, especially writers that I, I i find just uh just d- detestable frankly i i there i have no time for doomers and and nihilists um both in my personal life and in and in my uh enjoyment of fiction so i think i so that i think that that helps it with me i think if it was just a nothing but unremittent darkness i'd have to probably i mean the the artistic kind of similar to what i said with house of leaves i re- i really appreciated even though this is supposed to be about an enjoyment the art the the artistical feat that he pulled off add, added to my enjoyment so i'm counting it in there um and like i said even it's it's unconventional also in that there's it, it's weird to say like oh man I just I really enjoyed the book with like the cannibalism and the and the and the and the death. So that that is that is a weird to say I enjoy. At least it is to me. Uh, but like I said, the I, I'm going I'm kind of cheating here and putting it and, and quali- qualifying enjoyment as experienced emotional uh, resonance. So I feel comfortable putting it in S, but I may bump it down. Uh, here in the future um, because we've got some some real heavy hitters coming up yeah um i left the book believing that the the group that the boy is heading towards um have good intentions in mind and that's that's what i'm choosing to believe but yes very good book like i said is about about as high as of a b as you can have without being an a so i guess an 89 out of 100 if you want to go by that metric um sure even though i don't like doing ratings out of 100 because i think it's silly um unless you're actually grading you know in in an ap- academic sense i guess but uh yeah really really enjoyed the road uh next up's neuromancer by william gold uh, next up is neuromancer by william gibson so i'm gonna go ahead and throw this one in c tier um Ooh. i wanted to like this book way more than i did and I'll give part of an explanation of why I'm putting it in C tier. Um, I didn't even remember we read this book. Oh my God! Really? <laughs> when I was listing out, when I was when I was writing out the list of these book of the books that we read, I did not remember. I could not remember with the eighth book. You remember when I was when I, when I was creating the list? Like I was asking. I saw seven books and I said, "What did we read in between The Road and Jurassic Park?" And uh, yeah, if if I'm having to ask, and we, I mean, eight books is not a ton, you know. It's 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 not nothing, but it's it's also not a ton. So um, yeah, <laughs> it clearly didn't make that much of an impact on me, or as much as it should have. Um, it's a shame. I, I like I said, this is this is another one of those things where there is a lot of the aspects of it that I should like. I like cyberpunk, um, and this is like the the. Uh, the er cyberpunk this is the the well from whence it springs um you could argue that maybe that's why i don't enjoy it as much as i do because all of the other cyberpunk that's come out since it have kind of built on it so maybe it, i'm not getting that sort of uh like a, like within some of these other books that i've discussed like that sort of like burst of like artistic novelty um 
so maybe that weighs it down a little bit um again this was another one that was it was tough for me again this is a i, I am not here's the thing i'm not really one of the people that is like oh i have to the character has to be like a an, an unimpeachable good person and and all of that i i i like a lot of characters with or a lot of uh like books and films and tv shows with with nuanced and complex protagonists um you know just to name a few like like lost like the sopranos like the godfather you know the all you know all the, that kind of stuff I, I i i so i'm not saying that i need a squeaky clean protagonist what i am saying though is that the protagonist again whose name escapes me again really bad sign that i can't even i can't even remember the name um, Sounds like you have a bad case of forgetfulness. I'm uh, overdrawn at the memory bank. Yeah. Somebody needs to call Johnny Mnemonic. This Mnemonic. sounds like the worst case scenario for this book for you. Oh, yes. Case. His name was Case. Um, anyway, didn't really like him. Uh, the character of Molly, she was pretty good, but not really in it that much. Um, there are some interesting ideas in this one about about AI. It's one of the earliest. Um, I mean, I'm sure Asimov meant, does does this before, but it, one of the one of the earlier. Um, I don't want to say necessarily pro AI, but it it does kind of ask questions that do, that do kind of grant a certain like. Um, I don't want to say personhood exactly because that's not right fully, but like. This it kind of treats the AI in a way that it, it asks the question: Should these things, you know, should they exist? Do they, are they, you know, what is the relative value of their life and their existence? There's there's so there's some interesting, and what would they, what might they do to uh, to either perpetuate themselves, to protect themselves, and that kind of thing. So the book asks some interesting questions, but um, and there are some interesting sequences, you know, when when um, neuromancer is like like there's some evo there's one really evocative sequence uh where case is like walking through a hotel and uh like the pay phones are ringing as he's walking along this hallway pay phones are ringing the closest one to him is ringing in succession as he walks through the hallway that was at the airport uh, that was oh it was at the airport well again you know but the but the like the, that image was very resonant in my mind and it was really it was so there were some definitely some cool moments um one thing that i will say about the 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 book that i that i also kind of enjoyed was that sort of even though it wasn't intentional because it was just working with the knowledge of the world at the time was that kind of retro futurism so i, I as i mentioned with the payphone thing i mean obviously we are in the future and we don't use there are very few payphones in existence but not zero um but the, but it, the, for the most part, payphones are a thing of the past. Um, but instead of finding that dated, I found it rather charming. Um, however, not enough to uh, one really remember that I read the book, or two, uh, I guess, really buoy my enjoyment over just kind of getting through it. I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was fun. Uh, I thought it was a nice little heist book uh, that kind of. Uh, kind of tips your expectations a little bit um i did like molly a lot molly was my favorite character in the book i thought case was fine as a protagonist but i kind of, i think he kind of hit the um just good enough protagonist kind of thing to where it's like he's not great but he's definitely serviceable to the plot being told um i can't remember the name of the ai he had that was like based off of it's like the first heist they do to get the um the uh basically the keanu reeves and cyberpunk equivalent um in his head the i forgot what, i forgot the the terminology that you used in the book uh I'm, I'm watching what you're doing with leviathan wakes moving it from b to c and you're making me real upset right now i didn't i didn't see it in b so i was just like well i liked the stranger more than leviathan wakes so uh but uh anyways i i, I really enjoyed um I really enjoyed the book. I, I thought it was fun. Uh, did some cool things. 
Uh, really loved how the use of technology. Um, yeah, I just you know I thought it was very fun. Uh, I've, I've I you know I've said fun a lot, but I it's just kind of I don't really have a better word for it currently. Um, okay, that's annoying. You're playing games with my heart right now, moving Leviathan wakes around. No, I, I well, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to uh, to th derail your thought, but I thought about it again, and I was like, which would I rather read if if I have to read one or the other? If I were to read again, and I was like, I would probably rather read Leviathan Wakes to the Stranger. Uh, but yeah, um, just to kind of wrap up my thoughts on Neuromancer, because um, a lot of it, if I just kind of kept going, would be repeating what you've already said. So yeah, I. I thought it was good. Uh, it didn't it didn't blow me away, but it didn't underwhelm me, and I had I had a good time the whole time. So I'm gonna put it for me personally. I'm putting it in mid B tier, right behind the road. So you know, I think that's fair. Yeah, very kind of middle of the road, B tier kind of book for me. Really enjoyed it. I will say, I will say, this is these uh, when I when I list these books in the way I do. It's not that I see them as being without merit in any way. I, I, I could easily see a path for the, the right kind of person to have Neuromancer in A tier. Um, S tier, I don't know. To me, that's that, that would be stretching it. But uh, I will say I could, I could see the path to have it in A tier. Um, so I, I'm not going to argue against it being in B. Yeah. Um, next up is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. This is one of the ones I was referring to as a heavy hitter when I was thinking of, um, what, what, um, what was coming up. Um, artistically, you know, maybe not, not the best, uh, book that we've read. Although not, not artistically bankrupt either. Um. There are definitely some aspects of the book that are very of its time, and and, and uh, Crichton is a, a little bit of a crank on a couple of things, but man, oh man, could he he write a a, a really ripping yarn. <laughs> this is this book is uh, very very enjoyable. Um, every every uh, action sequence is is a lot of fun. Um, uh, the what I'm I'm going to keep it in A though. I mean it's it was it was fun, it was fascinating. The characters are all very interesting. But some of them a little annoying, gotta say. Didn't care for the kids as much this time around. This the first time I read this book, um, or I guess listened to the audiobook a, a, a few years ago, uh, which I, Dusty actually gave to me. Um, I, I didn't really mind the kids all that much. This time, for whatever reason, they kind of kind of stuck in my craw a little bit a few times. So, I'm gonna put this one comfortably in A, but it is it was a a a little behind House of Leaves, but it was a uh, a really a shining experience, really good. Um, lots of cool sequences, cool dinosaurs, great premise. Um, uh, the, but there, there are a couple. There were a couple of issues. Um, one of the thing for the example, uh, for one example, was the whole last portion when they went to go like destroy the uh, destroy the, the 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 cave, going into the caves to like destroy the nests. That was entirely superfluous to the book, uh, to to the resolution of the of the uh, the plot and of the. The, the the real the the, the quote unquote the, the real world situation um as far as like containing the dino outbreak um like that was pretty much that was pretty much uh, uh, a, a a diversion that really did not add anything to the book um i don't think it was very artistically like uh, challenging in a lot of ways so i i got to so i can't really put it above the road or house of leaves that really like really Sean in that, that perspective. I, but like I said, it's, it's all very enjoyable. Um, it's very good. I am going to rank it as an A tier. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I've been pretty vocal about how much I love this book in the past uh, when we covered it. And as we were covering it, I because I, this is a book that I had listened to the audiobook for years and years ago. And I, while we were covering it, I talked about how it's like, oh, I love it, and there's some really great scenes coming up in the next in the next couple parts that are some of my favorites in the book, and yada yada yada. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of easy for me to say that this is for me just a phenomenal book. It's really easy for me to rank this very high. I'm sure this is not going to be a a major shocker. This might actually be a little bit of a shocker where I put this. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's obviously going to be ranking really high for me, uh, because I love it. And, uh, yeah, uh, hashtag justice for Gennaro, the, the true, <laughs> the true hero of the book. Um, the, the true unsung hero, the true hero of the book, I think is still Muldoon and, and Grant, but, um, I, I will say Gennaro ha- has the strongest arc of any character. Absolutely. Um, and I, I, I almost feel like Crichton himself didn't really realize that. <laughs> but um, but he definitely has the biggest arc and, and, and thus makes himself one of the, the most interesting and, to my way of thinking, most likable characters. Yeah, by the end, I definitely would agree with that. Um, I love Gennaro in the book. I, if I have any criticism towards the movie, it's how they use Gennaro. Um, but even then, it's it's a different story that follows the same general premise. So you know, we're, I'm not going to get big big into that. Great, great, great movie. Great, great, great book. Um, I love Jurassic Park. It's, it's it's been one of my favorites since I first consumed it. It's one of the few times where, um, having watched the movie first and then read the book, uh, go back and say I do like the book more than the movie. I'm going to I'm going to do a minor disagreement with you and say that like while for the major plot itself the um raptor nest was not needed I think for the meta context and for kind of just uh for the um the overall meaning to the book I think the raptor nest sequence uh is really poetic and uh, just kind of really encapsulates the uh, the tragedy of Jurassic Park and the um, horror and uh, just ignorant, selfish evilness of uh, of Hammond and uh, yeah, I don't know. I I still I still occasionally think about just what it means at least to me, to be those raptors standing out, looking out into the ocean with that, that want, that need to, to migrate, to move on to that instinctual pool, but being able, but, but, but being unfulfilled because you lack the evolutionary parts to fulfill it. Um, but also at the same time, that little glimmer of hope of the little raptor babies that survived, uh, the implication of the raptor babies that survived, but are, are, are finally achieving that migration they are they are the 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 triumph over hammond's evil uh even though it has a very negative connotation for the world at large um it's just that that kind of there you almost can't help but smile at um the fact that they um you get that payoff for the the migration scene in the end and it's it's very sweet in a book about uh prehistoric creatures that exist purely to kill us um it is a very sweet ending and i don't know i love it it's just it's i don't know man jurassic park does things to me it's 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 such a weird book in that way that i just kind of i i feel these kind of feelings for it um but with that said no you're you're talking you're talking me into this i'm I'm changing my pick but go ahead yeah I, i feel like i did this when we were recording the final episode as well that that mammoth of an episode that was so big i had to split it into two because i just it was a great it was one of my. Those are two of my favorite episodes. That they might be my favorite episodes that we did this year. Yeah, there was just so much to talk about, and it was just you know I I got so deep into it because th- this is just a book that really really resonates with me on a lot of levels, and like I said, this might kind of shock you because of what I've been saying, but I am going to put this in the A tier for me. It is like the road. It is as A as you could get without being an S. Which I guess for me would, if you want to once again throw the out of 100 grade on it, which I don't like, but just to really kind of paint the picture for me. 
Um, I would say it's like in that 95 to 97 out of 100 range for me. It's where it's like just barely off the cusp of that S tier for me. Just, you know, one point away. I, I love it so much. Um, it's such a strong story with great characters. Uh, it's, you know, it's just... I think I think it's one of those books where on the surface it's just a fun action romp through a park with dinosaurs. But when you dig down deep into it... Uh, probably deeper than Crichton ever intended because you're the type of person to do these kind of things. You find like a really beautiful story of man versus nature, and what and and a, a real a true question of what what it means to be good good evil or something that exists outside of the realm of morality. And yeah, I just I I don't know. I could never say enough great things about Jurassic Park. It's one of my favorite books in the genre. It's, yeah, it's one of my favorite books we read this year. I love it. It's just such a classic. You, you, you convinced me to move it over House of Leaves because I, I, my, my minor gripes aside, I was like, okay, I really thought about it and, uh, and I don't want to keep bringing this up over and over, but there were parts of House of Leaves that I like just outright disliked. There was never a moment in Jurassic Park that I outright disliked. And also, as you pointed out, there's there are the book does ask a lot of very intriguing and thought provoking questions, and the central thesis remains correct. Um, do not resurrect uh, prehistoric animals, and also uh, rich guys cannot be trusted. So, I I, I, I can I can put that above uh, House of Leaves. Although again, still both both in A, but I, I'll, I'll go ahead and. And uh, like I said, like you said, just also just a ton of like really fun romp, just really fun romp. Uh, I, I'll, I'll put it as above House of Leaves, still in the A category. Yeah. Getting close to the end here. The Shining by Stephen King. Okay. Um, this one was really, really good. Um, I, I was actually Dusty that introduced me to, to King's work. Um, a couple of years ago, or and it wasn't like anything directly. He was just he just you know he asked me, you know, if I've ever read any of his books, and we kind of talked about him a little bit. And um, I I actually hadn't read any of the, of his books, and then so I read uh, Salem's Lot, and I was uh, very very surprised by how much I liked it. Um, so this is this I guess the second book that I've I've read of his and it, it's I mean I've read some of the, the 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 collections of short stories and I've I've heard a couple of audiobooks but actually sitting down you know paper in hand um, this is the second book of his that I've read and um, it was really really good um, there was this book can contain some interesting ideas about cycles of abuse and um uh, and addiction uh, a lot of interesting sort of like uh, metaphysical things in in and around the the overlook hotel um questions about the nature of evil and um you know w whether man can be redeemed um some very dated sections regarding uh, racial stuff, but uh, like a like a little bit over the top. Um, so I got to dock it a little bit for that. I'd say but it's I, only I, dated because it's of its time, and we have moved past that. But that is kind of, I guess, the point. I, I will say the intentions. The intentions were to indicate how evil this entity was and how and how bad and or how bad those the people participating in the racial stuff though they were portrayed as bad so i will give it at least credit in that respect but it was it was kind of jarring um so I, I but i i again really good book um really loved it uh the characters every character even though there was like a pretty limited pool of characters all of them were really, really interesting, very well written. Um, I really like this book. I really recommend this book. I think... 
This is tough. I, I'm not sure where I land on this one versus Jurassic Park. Because they're both just really good, really fun books. Um, I'm going to give it to Jurassic Park, but I'm still putting it in the A tier. So... Yeah, that's it, it. It was it was a great book. Um, highly, highly recommend. Um, the only thing is, I mean, Shining, very good, very engaging. Jurassic Park, just a little bit more fun, um, and that's that's gonna really net you a lot of goodwill in this sort of like enjoyment uh, weighted heavily in terms of enjoyment uh, ranking system. But if if I were to uh, Maybe change it. If it was artistic merit, maybe you flip Jurassic Park in this one. But still both very good books. Yeah. Um, as I've said before, uh, I'm such a huge fan of King. I, I, I edited out our big conversation about Stephen King in the first episode of The Shining. And I wanted to upload it as a as a standalone video. Kind of like I, what I did with the, uh, what was it, Dusty Rants for about Yakuza for 12 minutes thing. And I forgot mm-hmm. to do it. It's ready to go. I I don't remember if I have it actually, um, fully fully, um, like exported and rendered and ready to upload. But I know I have it edited. Um, so maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll release that. Maybe early next year or just kind of. Or maybe if we do another Stephen King book, kind of as a, uh, as a um, a trailer to that. Um, we definitely should do another Stephen King book. I I really, really enjoy his work. Yeah, but King King is definitely up there as one of my favorite authors, and I do think The Shining is... I think it's... If it's not, in my opinion, if it's not up there in the top tier, in the in the S tier for Stephen King, uh, for the greats, it just barely, uh, barely misses out on being S tier for him. Um, which, with that kind of implication in mind, it is going into A tier for me. Um, just behind Jurassic Park. Uh, I, I, I love it. I think it's a great book. I can't really say a lot of negatives about it in terms of like the story aspect of it. Yeah, like you said, there's a lot there's a lot of dated things in it. Um, you know, crazy, you know, a book that came out 40, 50 years ago has a lot of things that may not have been seen as negative 40, 50 years ago, but are seen as a negative today. You know, well, that's like kind I of... said, they, they are generally portrayed neg- in negative or to, to indicate the person is not good, but it just... It, it is. It is. Uh, it, it can be kind of coarse and jarring in those. Yeah. Moments. King's heart is in the right place, uh, and and I'll I'll leave it at that. It's. I, I don't know that he would make those choices now. Um, I don't know that they were the right choice. I don't know that he make those choices now. But I would say his heart is in the right place on those issues. So, not to give him a pass, but you know, I think that kind of softens it a little bit. Yeah, I I, I like to think that that's the case as well. But I, I kind of see it similarly to something like. Um, some old like Disney movies or something where you know nowadays they have those those uh, those disclaimers that pop up at the start that says um, this contains something that does basically didn't age well and does not reflect our our current views but in the interest of preservation we will we're keeping it as it was um, you know I I kind of see it as something kind of similar to like that um, to where mm-hmm. it's like you know you can't in order to keep the integrity of the story and the author's intent you have to keep keep that and i'd say the only time you would not try to respect the author in that regard is if there was malicious intent from the author towards a group of people in that regard uh but i don't personally feel i don't know if this is just a bias of me wanting to like you said kind of give stephen king the benefit of the doubt and believe in the best for him but i'd like to think you know knowing what i know about him in a in a context of insert current year here stephen king uh i'd like to think that his general social political um leaning uh maybe still aligns with today where he aligned with it 40 50 years ago. i don't know it's it's hard to say because i didn't know him in 1977 or whatever but yeah i really enjoyed the shining as a book um i love the story i love the characters the character writing by king is always phenomenal and this is just another example of great character writing um, that was it was probably the best character writing of any book that we've read this year i would agree with that for sure uh it didn't suffer from the um i guess for lack of a better term meme of stephen king with having a bad ending which i generally disagree with that 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 meme in general um 
but I do. It had a good ending. I thought uh, kind of abrupt. It, there were a few things that I would have liked to have gotten an answer to, but that was like I said in the episode, more of me just not wanting to leave this world yet, and not me feeling like Stephen King kind of blue balled me in a literary sense. Um, Insert Stephen King quote about the poetry of fear. Yeah. So yeah, it's just it was a very good book. It's definitely one of my favorites um, this year. Uh, definitely. If not, like I said, if not up there is one of my favorites for King. It's it's just barely, just it's on the outside looking in, for it. So yeah, just great book overall, and that's just it's like a mid A tier for me. But last and for you certainly probably the least, um, Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Annihilation, more like annihilate this book from the public record. Okay, that's a little harsh, but <laughs> but. I, I did not like this book. Um, no, this should not be annihilated from the public record. It's it's pretty good in, in a lot of ways. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting ideas here um, about ecology and about the way we interact with an environment and how that environment in turn interacts with us. Um, like we said during the book, uh, the, re- the, the recap episodes for the book, um, a lot of good parts there unfortunately they put they when when we put them together in this book um it just did not work for me uh this we talked we we went from probably the strongest character writing to some of the weaker uh from my perspective um the i think this book needed a little more time in the oven like i said i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because there are a lot of good moments uh by vandermeer and a lot of strong um good like good description of things and places and he is he is a competent writer certainly i, I think that's that that is the very least you can say about him but uh I, I i like i said at the time this book and its two sequels were kind of published in month span i i think this one needed a little more time to gestate um the characters were okay but they were mostly interchangeable um they didn't really show there was the the main character had somewhat of an arc but like i feel like most of the change that the character had was physical because they were mutating um (laughs) there i i don't know it was it was pretty good um it was well intended um but the pieces just didn't fit for me so I, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in D because this is the one that I just flat out uh, didn't really enjoy. So I think this book probably uh, has the biggest glow up for me um, in hindsight after finishing it, which oddly enough is, is kind of funny because it's the, it's the most recent one we've read. Um, so... You know, I, I think, and I think part of the reason for it was just because of this, because of us doing this. I think if I would have just read it by myself, uh, on my own, without really kind of thinking about it outside of the time I spent with it, I think I'd be right there with you putting it in D tier, thinking like, well, you know, that was a book, I guess, uh, and just kind of walking away from it. But I think being able to come here and talk to you about it, hear your thoughts on it, think about it a little more and come to these kind of different ideas about it, I think has really helped my my post-mortem of this book uh, quite a bit. So, yeah, like I said, I think it has the biggest glow up for me. Um, so I feel a little stronger than this one than you do. And I'm going to do kind of a... You might find this a little controversial, uh, just like I find your opinion on Leviathan Wakes a little controversial. But... I'm going to move House of Leaves down from bottom of B tier to top of C tier. Oh my god. And I'm going to put Annihilation in mid B tier. Oh my god, this mid is a terrible tier. take. This is an this is an abominable take. I I think I think Annihilation is like just barely over the hump for B tier and I think that I'm going to put House of Leaves just just barely out of b tier as well 
at the, at the what is one thing that Annihilation does better than House of Leaves? Um, rereadability. Yeah, because it's like two hundred pages. Yes, which honestly, I feel like if you if you just condensed uh, House of Leaves down from all of its gimmicks and put it into a, a normal formatted book, it would probably be two to three hundred pages. So I would say about three eighty four somewhere in there yeah so i wouldn't say it's terribly longer it's like i, I would say it's maybe 60 70 percent it's almost twice as long i'd say like 60 70 percent longer than annihilation but i think for me personally i think it's the honestly i think it's the the lighthouse keeper that that gives it that minor edge for me i think it's the the, the meta story of the lighthouse keeper the lighthouse keeper is in any way more interesting than anything going on with the Navinsons or the the the, the Johnny Truant going insane or Zampano. No way. Look, no way. okay, I'm I'm not gonna disagree with that, but I think the lows of House of Leaves are low enough to bring it down to to the top of C for me. And I but think there are so many t- good things. There's like the lows are low. I'll grant you. But they are pretty relative to what you're reading. There is so much more highs. There are more highs, but I, I just, you know. Look, I'll put it this way. I feel like if I'm grading on a bell curve, that's what puts Annihilation in B. Okay, but if we're doing bell curve, you have to put something in D. So so no way. You got we we can't we can't go there. We, we so there's no Can way I put Light Lark that in Annihilation D? What? Can I put Light Lark in D? No, because we didn't cover it on the show. <laughs> yeah, but I covered it in Sad Boys Book Review, so it's been covered on this, uh, in this network, so. Alright, if you feel you must, but I, I, I must say, there is no, no shot that Annihilation is better than House of Leaves. There is no way no no, and i by that i mean there is not a single method that you could conceive annihilation and that is superior to what what they achieve and what danny lefsky achieves in house of leaves look i'll put it this way i think annihilation is above house of leaves for me the same way leviathan wakes is above the stranger for you See, but I don't know. I, the, like the, the, I enjoy legitimately and think the, the Leviathan Wakes is more entertaining than The Stranger. And in this sort of uh, enjoyment-based paradigm, strictly more, more or less strictly in enjoyment-based paradigm, there is a clear distinction. But there is, I, there is no way that you enjoyed Annihilation more than House of Leaves honestly like be 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 so real i i think it's the compact size of it the pacing the lighthouse keeper story meta storyline uh the enjoyment i found with the flashbacks and the husband storyline i think the lows for it for me just don't really hit the same lows for me that house of leaves did i don't think the highs hit the same for me as the house of leaves highs but i think just that it's that that consistency that a little more mid-tier consistency that Annihilation has, as opposed to House of Leaves having mountainous highs and craterous lows, uh, is but there's like two or three craterous lows. Most of a most of Annihilation is a low. For you, it was, and I, I even said when we were talking about it that I think I feel a little more strongly about it than you do, and I, I do think it was because, and I think it is only because of us talking about it that I feel this way about it. I think if I didn't talk to to you about this it would be firmly in the d tier with you but this is also another one where it's like my personal feelings on it put it like in that weird kind of bc kind of range but from a uh kind of like how i said house of leaves i put in the at the time low b now high c tier but from a format or stylistic perspective definitely would go in the s tier I feel like this uh, somewhat similarly with Annihilation, how I'm like kind of in a a weak B, strong C mindset for it. But like in terms of like a more kind of trying to look at it in a more artistic sense, I would put it, I would put it 
pretty firmly in the A tier. I would put it above something like Jurassic Park for an artistic thing, but for personal enjoyment, I, that's that's where I'm kind of leaving it is in that between that between that C, B and C thing. But yeah, I'm sorry, dude. I I I really, I just personal enjoyment. I think objectively, House of Leaves is probably the better book. Um, but I think for my personal enjoyment, I think the lows in Leviathan or not sorry. The lows in House of Leaves were enough to kind of give it that average that puts it just slightly under Annihilation for me. You are crazy for this one, dude. I I I don't even know what to say. I'll accept <laughs> but, it. Uh, I think you're crazy for putting Leviathan Wakes at the bottom of B, but that's just me. But like well, it's it's know. at the bottom of B by default because there is no nothing else in B for me. Well, yeah. So by that logic, it's also at the top of B. But I see you have it there at like the 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 damn near close to C tier though, and you did put it in C tier for a second until I kind of like I guess convinced. Are you moving it again? Are you moving it again? Are you doing that sure. to spite me? <laughs> no, oh. that's not what I was actually doing. This is what I'm doing. So just so you feel better about it because no i don't i i i no i'm just i'm i'm just kind of joshing you over it but yeah i mean i just you know i i really just don't know what to tell you i i something about annihilation just kind of works for me in a way that i don't want to say in a way that the house of leaves didn't because that's not fair to house of leaves um because it did work on you because you enjoyed it did and I, I will say once again, I enjoyed all of these books. Uh, I, I would say even with a book being mid C tier for me, that's still better. I, I for me, I, I feel like I have a very odd kind of ranking system because what someone would give a seven or an eight out of ten as just being a purely average book, I would give a five. Like someone seven or eight was is my five. And my seven or eight might be someone's eight or nine. So, like, for me, a C tier for House of Leaves is an A tier for you. Because my, my, I feel like my grading is just very... I I don't want to say, like... it's I, I, I like to have a higher range, I guess. I, I, I have more of a dynamic range, if you will, if you'll allow me that. Um, and because I just, I don't know. I feel like trying to, because, for example, um, look at the difference. I'm just going to use your list for example. Like, to, if we talk about the difference in quality between something like The Stranger and something like The Road, I feel like, or no, let me change that. If we talk about the difference between something like um, House of Leaves for you and something like Leviathan Wakes for you, or for me, something like The Road and something like The Shining, um, it doesn't seem like there's a, a big gap between it uh, because they, they are kind of like touching in, in rankings. Or even something like House of Leaves and The Stranger for You, where it's like one's an A tier and one's a C tier. Um, you know, there's like a bit of a... there's It seems like there's a bit of a gap there, but it's not like the biggest of gaps. But I kind of, I guess the way that I think of it is just to kind of broaden that gap range a little bit. So that for me, a 5 out of 10 is not a bad book. It's an average book. It's a very middle of the road. Does nothing particularly well, but nothing particularly bad either. And that's why, you know, something like Light Lark for me would be a, a 6. But for someone else, it might be a 4. Because I, I think it did a couple of things really well and a couple of things really bad. But I think the good outshines the bad, so I give it a six. Whereas someone might, you know, give it something. Lo well, I feel like a lot of people probably give it something lower. But I feel like a lot of people that really love that book would give it something way. I I don't know. Maybe it makes. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I I feel like I just have a more just. I try to my my rankings seem crazy, but it's because I have a, a I guess a lower floor than than other people do. Does that make sense? What you're saying. So, like I said, having something like House of Leaves in a C tier for me 
like I, I think I gave it a seven in my in my actual ranking. Let me let me look at that again. Um, I think I gave it a seven. Yes, I did. And I gave Annihilation a seven as well. So for me. I think I gave The Stranger a 7, Neuromancer and the Road an 8, Shining and Jurassic Park a 9, and Leviathan Wakes a 10. So actually, if you look at my actual rankings, Leviathan Wakes a... Uh, my, my actual rankings, and I guess I'll just kind of use this to segue into uh, my, my actual rankings. Um, I have it as uh, my favorite book of the year was Leviathan Wakes, followed by Jurassic Park. And then The Shining, The Road, Neuromancer, Annihilation, House of Leaves. And then last, but I really need to stress, not 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 least. Well, I mean, technically least in this regard. Um, the Stranger. But, like, even then, it's I would still take The Stranger, which was, by all technical accounts, my least favorite book we covered this year. I would still take that over a lot of books I've read in my life. I would take it over something like Like Lark. I would take it over something, absolutely, you know, the Twilight series. I'd probably take it over something like Aragon, which is a book that I grew up with, um, that series. I love it to death. I went and listened to the audiobooks a couple years ago and was like, you know, it's it's rough. And, you know, uh, Aragon is clearly Luke Skywalker and Brahm is clearly Obi-Wan Kenobi, yada, yada, yada. You know, there's a lot of uh, um, Christopher Polini wore his influences on his sleeve and he really kind of towed the line between... Uh, influence and um, uh, or I I I between imitation and um, plagiarism I think he really towed that line um, but I would still probably say like The Stranger as a novel is definitely better than something like Aragon even though my enjoyment factor for Aragon would definitely be hard higher but like yeah it's just kind of one of those things where it's I'm, I'm saying a lot of words to basically try to gaslight, manipulate, and just kind of throw attention away from the idea that I think Annihilation was a more enjoyable book to me than House of Leaves. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's just kind of, you know, I think it's because I like to think that I have a lower floor and possibly even a higher ceiling as well than a standard... 7 is average, 8 is good, 9 is great, 10 is perfect kind of rating, rating scale, and anything under an 8 is really shit, if we're, if we're being honest with how people rate things nowadays. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just I think Annihilation just barely scrapes it out. If, if I'm going to use a number system once again, I think House of Leaves would be like a 78, 79, and a Leviathan... <laughs> Annihilation would be like a 79, maybe just maybe able to round it to an 80 for me. All right, all right. Well, I will say House of Leaves better, Stream Poe. Yeah, I just want you to know, by the way, that uh, uh, don't let this distract you from the fact that I have Neuromancer above House of Leaves as well. I will say I, I disagree with that also very strongly, but it doesn't bother me as much because I didn't outright dislike Neuromancer. And like I said, like I said when I discussed Neuromancer, I can see the path for it to be in the A tier for someone. Maybe not the S, but I can, I can, I can understand the kind of person and psychology and general preferences that rank... Um, Neuromancer above House of Leaves, even if I may not agree with that. Yeah. And what I cannot understand is ranking Annihilation over House of Leaves, but <laughs> I digress. Um, so I just want to point out also, by the way, that um, going off of our rankings here, so just to, to really reiterate real quick, my, my best to worst, and I really want to stress that the worst is not bad in the slightest for me, is Leviathan Wakes, Jurassic Park, The Shining, The Road, Neuromancer, Annihilation, House of Leaves, and The Stranger for me. Um, uh, I'm looking at yours as well, and I'll let you go through yours. 
But I just want to point out something I find kind of funny, and I think this is not anything indicative of of either of our choices, but just kind of, uh, I guess, our objective with our choices. But my four books are my top four, and your four book four book and your four books are my bottom four. And on your list, one of my books is in your bottom four, but the other bottom four are your books. Or the other three in the bottom four are your books, and your other book that isn't in the bottom four is number four for you. So I think it's just kind of like I said, I'm 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 not trying to like create some sort of like narrative or anything, but I think it just kind of goes to show that when I was picking a book, I was thinking more about like the fun of reading, and when you were picking books, you were looking at the art of reading, and I I. I think that's just a great way to kind of show how those things kind of can come out as like a different, um, it can come out differently for people. Cause like this, like I said, the stranger, I would very clearly put in a, maybe even S for artistic value. House of leaves is a guaranteed S for artistic value. Um, but I have them as seven and eight in my personal ranking. Jurassic park is my number two. But I'd put it maybe B or C in artistic value. Leviathan Wakes is my number one, but I'd put it like B or C in artistic value. The only one that I picked that I'd say is a very clear S in artistic value is The Road. And I think that's just kind of a given. The Shining, I'd say, is like an A, B. So like like I said, I don't want to try and create some sort of narrative as like I pick better books than you. Because that's not at all what I'm saying. I just think it's just kind of, it's funny to see how you went in it with a more kind of literary bend to it and i went into it with a more entertainment bend so just kind of something i noticed and i thought was kind of fun yeah i mean and here's the, the thing is i tro i deliberately chose books that were challenging i didn't i i, I wasn't like picking like 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 in the the most like sort of inoffensive like like uh, I mean, someone could argue that these are basic, but like, you know, I was, I was j deliberately trying to th pick things that kind of push the boundary for myself because I feel like if I left to my own devices, I could very easily kind of fall into this rut of or maybe not rut, but like not leaving a comfort zone. What, the books that I chose, you know, were, were deliberately provocative in one way or the other to kind of like, to, or or you well I'll just leave it at that I, I that that was that so that was that was a per, uh, a choice so I'm I'm not surprised that they didn't all pan out but I would also like to point out that we we more or less agreed on Jurassic Park I, I I'm not I, I don't know if I can fully let you have that one because I feel like I feel like we kind of like came to that one together yeah that that is that that's pretty fair uh, it, it was very much a case of you were like, I, I think it, we did it after Neuromancer, right? Yeah. Yeah, you you picked Neuromancer, and you were like, oh, dang, I should have picked Jurassic Park because it's the 30th anniversary of the movie, and it's just a great book, and I want to read it, and it's, you know, I should have picked that instead of Neuromancer. So I was like, okay, fine, I picked Jurassic Park as our next book. So, yeah, I guess if you want to be that way, I will give you Jurassic Park and get, give you five books to my three this year. If if you want to call that technicality, well, I, I will allow it. I'm not saying you you have to give it to. I'm saying we share it. Yeah. Okay. And and with that, I, I I would also say we kind of share the Shining too because that was something we agreed to. to it was quote unquote my choice, quote unquote. Um, but it was something that we came to together. And I think it, I was the one that may have suggested it, but it was something that the both of us were like, let's do Stephen King. Let's do a Stephen King book that we both haven't read. And let's do something nice and spooky for Halloween. And I was like, well, I think the best thing that might fit that might be The Shining. And you were like, yeah, I was, but I think you said you were between The Shining and Salem's Lot, but you had already read Salem's Lot, even though I hadn't. Um, so we both kind of so I, I would say the shining is kind of an agreeance between us as well so i guess technically if you really want to do that yeah sure my books were purely just the road and leviathan wakes but all the same though i think that it, no, more than well, anything i would be i would be more comfortable I, I i i can give you the shining i just want i i even though you are being very gracious here but i i'll give you the shining but i just want to have 
I, I just want to share Jurassic Park at least. That's fine. I'm okay with that. And once again, this isn't a competition. This isn't some sort of like thing. And like I said, I'm not trying to start a narrative. I think this more so shows that you are someone who is willing to take risks and go for something that has some like that goes for something that's more literarily important, something that makes a statement, something that challenges you, like you said. And like I said just then, something that you can take a risk with, whereas I'm somebody who played it very safe and picked the the very obvious uh, literary masterpiece with the road that everybody basically loves. And surprise, we loved it. And two, something that is considered to be one of the better sci-fi novels of the last decade in Leviathan Wakes. I have picked some very, very safe choices. The Shining is a super safe Stephen King book because it's critically acclaimed. It has a movie that is also critically acclaimed. It's considered to be one of Stephen King's better works. So The Shining is also a very, very safe pick. I picked very safe books because they were, one, books I hadn't read yet, with the exception of Jurassic Park, uh, two, books I was interested in, and three, books I thought would be really fun. Whereas you picked books that were about the risk, about the, the literary merit, about the, um, the kind of meta context within the book itself, with the exception, I guess, maybe of Annihilation, and books that really just kind of had an impact, even though they may not have had a lasting value after said impact. So I think it's, once again, it's not so much so a, a question of, I picked better books than you. I think you technically picked better books than I did. It's just, it's how we went about picking books, the perspective in which we went into with picking books. And yeah. I just find that interesting. And, and I think our ranking is reflective of, of uh, enjoyment. So, you know. Yeah, I think it's fair enough. Once again, this is not a ranking of the quality of the book, purely the enjoyment factor on a personal level. Because like I said, if I was ranking this just off the top of my head, if I was to go off of objectivity here, I think number one would very clearly be The Road. Two would probably be House of Leaves. Three would probably be The Stranger. Four would be The Shining. Uh, did I, uh, five, maybe Jurassic Park. Six... Uh, Annihilation, seven, Leviathan Wakes, and eight. What am I leaving out here? Neuromancer. I can't. I can't believe you're putting the Stranger at eight. Did I leave out the? I thought I put the Stranger at like four. Oh. I think. No, I, I think the. Four, I thought four. I think four was The Shining. Okay, let me think about this again. Uh, one would clearly be, uh, The Road. Two would be House of Leaves, probably. Three would be. Three would be probably The Stranger. Four would be uh, The Shining. Five would be... What am I missing here? Neuromancer? Uh, five would... I would say I, I'd be kind of between Jurassic Park or Neuromancer. For, th those would be five and six, maybe in no particular order. Seven would be Annihilation, and eight would be Leviathan Wakes. So, like, some of them quite literally flip. Like, Leviathan Wakes goes from one to eight for me, if we're going for, like, artistic integrity or, like, some sort of objectivity here. So, like, you know, my, my point being, like... And, and I think if you think about it that way as well, it quite literally flips to where most of my books are in the bottom half and yours are in the top half. So, it's just kind of... It's an interesting thing to look at in terms of how you approached look uh, picking books for this and how I approached it. I went for the very safe, entertaining, fun, enjoyable books, and you went for the hard, challenging, this would be in your high school reading list, but it also is going to make you think, even if it doesn't stick with you in an entertaining way, it's going to stick with you in a, in a long-lasting kind of way. Like you're a raptor standing on the beach looking at something that you can't have, but having a longing, primal, primal urge to reach out and grab it, but it's always just slightly out of reach. Those poor raptors. Yeah. Um, all right. So, you know, we talked about this a lot, but let me let me give you... We'll, we'll do my my one to eight. No, I don't want to do that. I'll do my eight to one. Worst to best. End on a high note. Uh, okay. So, eight, Annihilation. Seven, Neuromancer. Six, The Stranger. Uh, five, Leviathan Wakes. Four, House of Leaves. Three, The Shining. Two, Jurassic Park. One, The Road. So I, I kind of see what you're saying about ranking it by artistic merit. Um, I, I I guess if I had to do that, I would say I would say House of Leaves at one. And I know that might be controversial, but my thinking is this: I really, really appreciated what it was going for and how it tried to push the medium 
of literature forward. And if you think about it, because literature is such an, in, in, in many ways, an ancient art form, it was very exciting to see something very novel and uh, very interesting being tried here. So I will give it one, um, even though I think you could make a very strong case can be made for The Road, um, which is de facto here, uh, number two. Um, number three is The Stranger. I mean, it's it's a classic for, you know, many, many well-known reasons. And I think philosophically, and like the ideas that it discusses uh, are, are still very interesting. And there's still a lot of very valuable um, insights to this book. It, 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 I, in short, it has been talked about for, for decades. And it will be talked about for decades to come. Uh, next, I would say... I'm going to say The Shining. I mean, it's, it's really good. Um, it's, it is, it is a, a very... A, 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 a pop fiction so to say but i think there's a lot of interesting ideas a lot of interesting characters and the writing is 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 really good um st strongly strongly uh feel solid about that being a four um being four relative to the rankings um number five i'm gonna put jurassic park i think i i i came into it thinking it was just like a like fully just like a, a, a pop fiction kind of situation um but after your your lengthy discourse about about the raptors among other things um kind of like low-key pretty pretty uh interesting from a from a uh, an ideas perspective um what hurts it here and it hurts it quite a bit because i think the ideas are actually quite good the, the writing is, it's, well, not bad in any sense, uh, very workmanlike. There's there's nothing, or very few things, rather, that are just like these, like, because, again, the, 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 the image of the raptor on the beach is very striking. I, I will certainly grant you that. But abstracted from that, like, most of these things are, you know, very workmanlike. And, again, not at all bad, but there's no, not any, like, shimmering moments outside of that one that are like like wow that, that is just really really well written um next neuromancer again some interesting ideas but no real um no real shining moment um that's seven right uh i guess then after oh no it's not then after that um leviathan wakes um i will put that next because it's I think there are some interesting ideas, but again, nothing, nothing really, um, particularly like, like, wow, that, that was really an, an astonishingly well constructed sentence or phrase or any, you know, nothing, nothing really stood out to me about it in terms of the writing, but, uh, you know, again, a couple interesting ideas. So I'm not saying it's without any merit. Um, and then at the bottom, I'm going to put Annihilation again. You know, none of these books are without merit. That is not, uh, that is absolutely not the case. But, um, I, uh, there are parts of it, there, there, the, of the style. Whereas all of the ones that came, most of the ones that came before were good. There were a few that I just did not, um, that there was nothing that stood out, but it wasn't bad. Um, the, the, the sh Annihilation just, nothing really grabbed me you know just i don't know it, but but not bad it just so maybe my maybe my perspective's colored a little bit maybe you can kind of play with like six through eight there but yeah that that's my perspective on them uh as as art i will say this annihilation i don't think was a bad book <laughs> i i clearly did not enjoy it but there, there, I will say, of all the books that we've had, there are no bad books. Like there are, there are some really bad books in existence. None of these are bad. So I, 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 I agree. Um, these, these are just uh, these are pretty, 
these are all good books. Um, I recommend if you are interested in any of these genres that these cover, I recommend you giving them a shot. Um, even Annihilation. Um, I think every one of these deserves a, deserves a chance. One thing that I think is also kind of interesting that is fully unintended is that most of these have like a, 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 a film or TV adaptation. So Annihilation, The Shining, Jurassic Park, The Road, uh, Leviathan Wakes, probably The Stranger. I think The Stranger has one. I think it has um, something that may have been influenced or based on it, but maybe I don't know if it has anything that's directly. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I, this is just. I think there's an part. Italian movie, if I remember correctly, but I might not. But um, I think that was also fully unintentional. Like that was just like thinking of although there may, it may have played a part in that, that that that's kind of like circulated them into the either so that the cultural either so that we were like oh yeah that's a thing that we may we may not have heard about it otherwise but that didn't actually play any part in the selection of these books yeah but yeah uh i think that probably wraps us for 2023 um, I'd say a good year overall. Low volume. I think eight's pretty low for a year, but I think starting out that was a very good turnaround for us. We averaged, you know, about a book and a half a month. Yeah. No, yeah, a, a month. Were, I'm were... sorry. Reverse that. A month and a half per book. Oh, uh, I heard. I heard that correctly, but I think you did say it wrong. Uh, yeah, they. Um, you know, pretty good. Um, we had a couple hiatuses there. I think we could have squeezed one or two more books in there, but oh, for, sure. for various reasons, we had to, we had to, uh, we had to, to step away at a couple, a couple of times. But um, you know, just to to round it out here, um, great year for reading. Um, give give any and all of these books a shot. Um, thank you at all very much for uh, listening. Um, whether you you've just listened to a couple or you've listened to every one, um, you know, thank you all the same. Um, I really enjoyed this. Uh, and I thank you, Dusty, for uh, recommending this to us. Originally, this was just going to be you and I reading House of Leaves and maybe talking about it. The idea for this being a podcast um, is wholly your idea. So I, I and, and uh, so thank you for inviting me to be your co-host. Um, yeah, my insatiable need to, to, to have things recorded, documented, and put out there because of that, that idea of if nobody sees it, it didn't count. <laughs> Con, that's content brain for you. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, like I said, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Dusty. And uh, I look forward to season two of the Sad Boys Book Club. Yep, and yep, thank you, Daniel, for indulging me in my weird, wacky, crazy, and ridiculous antics. Um, I would like to, to put a lofty goal for next year and say let's cover 12 books in 2024. I know we have a couple of ideas in mind for some books we're going to cover, some theme, th thematic books based on certain um, uh, monthly topics. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to March personally. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, here's to year two and an even better year than the last with, uh, even more fun, entertaining books that might make me have existential crises. Well, if you're going to give yourself schizophrenia, you might as well do it with a book. Yep. Uh, thank you. Thank you everybody. And uh, happy new year. Take care.